know, um, as Dawn was sharing, that God has a path for us, and His path is always good. And, you know, it has to do with our finances, too. God cares about every little detail in our life. And, and here we're going to talk with someone who is going to share with us some information about banks and why do banks accept some loans and not others. David Boyle is the CFO of Orristown Bank, and he says that getting your loan denied might not be a bad thing. David, <laughs> welcome back to Real Life. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. I'm sure it doesn't oh, wow. feel like a good thing when it happens. I know. No, I'm sure. I'm... You have to address that off right away. Why is that not a bad thing? Well, sometimes people come to a bank looking for a loan for something that they really, really want, but they just don't have the ability to pay the loan back. Mm -hmm. And the bank will look at those things. And sometimes when the bank says no, we can look at that as a bit of a wake-up call from the Lord saying, whoa, time out for just a minute. Maybe my finances aren't what I thought they were, and I need to step back and reevaluate how I'm conducting myself financially. So the bank can kind of be that, uh, if you will, that, uh, that gut check that mm -hmm. we may right. have not looked at our situation as honestly as a banker would look at it. Right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Banks will go through various uh, reviews and analytics to see and test individuals or companies' ability to repay. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they don't fit into certain criteria, the bank will ultimately say no. Some others might say yes. Right. There are non-bank lenders out there that will, will do some things that I would suggest people need to just be aware of, be mm -hmm. careful of. But uh, do you think it's easy to get a loan? I, I know you can even do some online kind of applications. Is it as easy as that? It, it's actually fairly easy to go ahead and get a loan. Most mm -hmm. banks today will have the opportunity to do an online mm -hmm. application. Uh, or you can come into most bank offices and they'll take an application. Mm -hmm. And a lot of banks today can give you a fairly immediate decision depending on the complexity of the loan. So it's very easy to get it today. Well, David, the scripture says that a borrower is servant to the lender. So in that perspective, we probably don't want to be servant to the lender. But what are the conditions that you need to get a loan? There are times that you probably need to get a loan when it's the right thing to do and then maybe sometimes when it's not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. When's the right time to get a loan? Well, I have a saying, I typically wouldn't borrow for taxes or toys. Uh. <laughs> uh, so okay. uh, you don't want to borrow money to pay taxes or buy toys. Okay. Um, That's good. Borrowing yeah. money is typically for things we need in life, mm -hmm. whether it's a home, an automobile to get back and forth from work, right. oftentimes college education for right. our kids, those sorts of things. And the shorter you can keep the length of the debt, the better, because you won't be enslaved okay. or in bondage to the lender mm -hmm. uh, you know, any longer than you absolutely need to. Mm -hmm. And if, as long as we borrow within our means, then our ability to pay that back and sometimes pay it back in advance uh, is, is there. And it's, that's absolutely the right way to do it. Wow. Whoever would think about paying something in advance? That's not something people talk about doing, right? Well, I, you know, it, I think it's great to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. Our goal, and I hope you set this for yourself as a goal, is let's get out of debt. Let's, let's get away from being a servant to the lender. Nothing against bankers. We, we've got a banker here <laughs> who loves the Lord. Thank God for bankers and thank, thank God. But the goal would be to walk in a, in, in, in a supply of resources that you don't have to go borrow, that we would be the lender and not the borrower, the scripture says. So that'd be the goal. And so for us to get out of debt, it's hard though. It's oh very difficult. It is very difficult. I mean, like you were saying, you have mortgage, you have like school loans, possibly car loans. I mean, those are needs in life, you know, that, uh, that, is really predominant. So I, that's tough to do, to get out of debt. And, and banks want to loan money. We really mm -hmm. do. And we, we want to loan money to people that are have their fi finances in order, who are fiscally responsible, that can pay us back. Mm -hmm. Because the next need that they may want to borrow for it might be a little bit bigger. And banks want to be here. We need to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what keeps the, the financial system afloat, if mm -hmm. you will. And so sometimes saying no, uh, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And banks obviously need to be repaid so we can use that money to loan to the next person and the next right. person and the next person. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, banks are good things, but... Now, what about um, mortgages? And I know that the, the hot topic among especially older folks is to encourage them to do reverse mortgages. If you could just share about whether that's good or bad or what are your thoughts? What is it? Yeah, what, what, what is, is a reverse mm -hmm. mortgage? So a reverse mortgage is when uh, the lender will give you money, a some value of your home today that's not already encumbered by debt. If you own your home free and clear, mm -hmm. if it's worth $100,000, a bank may give you sixty or $70,000 in cash today and not expect any repayment. The repayment comes from uh, they don't give you the full value, but at the time where you're no longer to, able to live in the home, the actual home is owned by the lender, oh, and that's okay. how the debt mm -hmm. gets repaid. So that's it, not it, a product for everyone, right. Right. but in certain situations it can make sense for folks that are very, very much money constrained, asset rich, if you will, and cash poor. Right. It could be a way to do it, and so with no monthly payment, no monthly mm -hmm. obligation on that, it can work well. It creates issues for estate planning and some other things that right. folks need to be aware of. But mm -hmm. So let me walk through that with you again. So say your house is worth $100,000 and you don't have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You're paid, the house is paid off. Right. Then the bank will loan you up, and well, it's probably not a bank, if the lending institution will loan that person up to some percentage of that. Correct. Say it's $60,000. Right. And that's 60% of the equity. So 40% remains uh, in the house and then you get paid a monthly amount of money until you pass away? Is that no, how that the, works? what that difference between the 100000 and the 60000 goes to is basically to pay, it's, it's the lender's way of recouping some interest mm -hmm. right. that you don't have to pay. You as the borrower get the $60,000. And again, when you're no longer able to live there, the value of the home goes back to the lender. If the home goes up in value, that still all goes back to the lender. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I see what now, so, so you get that money in lump sum, or do you? Yes. So a lump sum traditionally. Amount of money. There are various types of programs, but the most common is a lump sum. Yeah. Is that a good thing for people to look at? It, it again, it goes back to the individual situation and the individual need. Mm -hmm. um, for some folks, it's absolutely a, a very good product. Uh, for others, it could be a trap into something that you don't. Right. If you want to leave your home to your kids someday, that option becomes more difficult under a reverse mortgage. But you wouldn't lose your house to the mortgage company because you don't have a payment. Correct, uh, correct. It's and the, it's, the, the amount of money the bank or the lender will advance you is based on actuarial mortality rates, based uh, on the age at which you enter the reverse mortgage obligation. So the house okay. kind of becomes like an insurance policy. Essentially, very right. similar to mm -hmm. some insurance products, right? Wow. Well, you know, I know that our time is limited, but I'm interested in hearing about car, you know, getting a loan to buy a car. I remember from the Larry Burkett days that they would say never take a car car loan out. You know, try to pay for your car up front. And that's hard to do, especially for young people getting started out. And, you know, if you have any tips about car loans at all. Or, so, you know. I, I, as I've said to my kids, okay. uh, borrowing money for cars is challenging. Right. Uh, because oftentimes you borrow based on what you think you can afford in a payment. Mm -hmm. And if you can start with a car that's paid for, whether it's a couple thousand dollars you were able to save, and you you drive that car until you can then buy a $6,000 car yeah. with cash and then a $10,000 car with cash. You can upgrade your vehicle. We all love to drive our cars in America, right? right. That's one of the things that we <laughs> yeah. all enjoy. Um, and so you can gradually work yourself up to buying that fancier car without incurring all the debt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So That's a smart baby strategy. Steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> baby steps, yes. That's, That's what Terry and I have been doing for a good while in our marriage. Yeah. Is doing exactly that, you know, riding them till they fall apart. <laughs> right. Take care of them. I, well, okay. relatively care for speaking. Them. Yep. So, kind of. Okay. Tender, loving care. <laughs> but, but then once they're no longer viable, then go find a cash yeah. purchase car. But as you're, as you're not having a car payment, what if you use a yeah. household budgeting tool, you can take what you would be paying in a car payment mm -hmm. and put it into savings so that when you need to replace that car, you have that you cash the already there. Help. Thank yeah. you for coming and sharing yeah, with us. You're very you. well. It's always good to have a banker in the house. Enjoy it. I enjoy being here. <laughs> thank, thank you very so much. much. We're not filling out an application though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're so glad that uh, you're able to watch us too. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about Islam and the Quran. You don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back.